All right, guys, when you solve systems of equations by substitution, what does it mean to substitute? To fill in for, right? If you have a substitute teacher, you guys are so sad that I'm not here, right? Right? Isn't that the, is that the case? All right, a lot of times, guys, when you solve an equation by substitution, it's already set up to make things easier on you. All right, if you have an equation that they're both in standard form, meaning it goes x, y, equal sign, constant, a lot of times elimination is the easiest because you don't really have to manipulate much. You just have to get coefficients to be exact opposites. We'll talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. Substitution, you have to <coughs> excuse me, arrange one of the equations to say y equals or x equals, and then you substitute in. So in this case, substitution lends itself to the solving method because you already have one of the equations that says y equals or it says x equals. In this case, it says y equals. So what you're going to do is, and it's good to do this sometimes, you're going to take 6x minus 11 and plug it in down here where you see the y. Do you guys see that? Mm -hmm. That's our substitution. So all I need to see from you guys is the work behind this. So you would rewrite, you have negative, whoops, negative 2x Minus 3, instead of y, what am I plugging in? 6x minus 11. Correct? And then finish the equation. So, equals negative 7. All you did was just replace the y in the second equation with whatever the first equation said y equals. Now you go through and solve the equation like you normally would. What should I do first with that negative 3? I need to distribute it first. So, I have negative 2x. Negative 3 times 6 <clears throat> is negative 18x. Negative times a negative is a positive equals negative 7. Agreed? Okay, combine like terms. What's negative 2 and negative 18? Negative 20x plus 33 equals negative 7. How do I get x by itself? Subtract 33. Good. So I have negative 20x equals what? Negative 40. negative 40. Divide both sides by negative 20. And I get x equals 2. two. Now, guys, super easy. You forget that negative sign with the 20. So you say negative 40 divided by 20 is negative 2. Right? Then you plug back in and you get a y value. You always need to check your x and y value just to make sure you didn't make a silly mistake. I found out that x equals 2. Now I can go and substitute in to either equation to find out what y equals. Which equation would be easier for me to do? The top one. All right, so I'm just going to simply come over here and say y equals, I'm going to say 6 times, what did I say x is? 2 minus 11. 6 times 2 is 12 minus 11. Y equals what? 1. So as an ordered pair, that's what I need to see. Your ordered pair is 2 comma 1. This is my X value. This is my Y. Questions. <clears throat> Should I just move on and go, oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm right? No. no. Just take a second to plug back in. Don't even worry. Don't even worry about showing any of your work. I just need to see that you guys... Know that your answer is right. So mentally, let's do this mentally. Let's plug in 2 and 1 in the top equation. 6 times 2 is 12, and 12 minus 11 is 1. Okay, that's true. Now let's look at the bottom. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4, okay. Minus, what's 3 times 1? So negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. True? Yeah. All right, we're good to go. Okay, let's go to the other one I have highlighted. <clears throat> let's try 4. All right, do I already have one of the equations set up nice and easy so life is not too rough? Yes or no? Yes. yes. They're telling me here what y equals. So I can take this and plug it in the first equation where I see y. Questions? You guys okay? All right, so I'm going to rewrite the top equation, negative 3x minus 3 times. Instead of y, what am I plugging in? Perfect. Negative 5x minus 17. And then finish the equation. Equals 3. Same steps. We're going to distribute that negative 3. Just be careful, guys, with your math. Negative 3x. What's a negative times a negative? Positive 15x. Good. 
What's negative 3 times negative 17? Good, Nino. Positive 51 equals 3. So clean this up. What's negative 3 and 15? 12. 12x, good. Plus 51 equals 3. Now what? <clears throat> Subtract 51, great. So I get 12x equals negative what? Forty-eight. Okay, <laughs> we're getting there. <laughs> and then do what? Divide. Divide both sides by twelve. So I got x equals negative four. How do I figure out what y equals? Plug it back in. Does it matter which equation I plug it back into? No. no but do we always want to try the easiest route? Yes. Yeah. So I'm going to plug it back into where it says y equals, and I don't even have to really think much. I just say negative five times negative four minus 17. What's negative five times negative four? Minus, minus 17 gives me? Three. So I found that my equation <clears throat> solution was negative four comma three. Now before we move on, let's just mentally check. What's negative four times negative three? 12, Twelve right? Minus, what's three times three? So 12 minus 9 is 3. Is that true? Yes. So we're good to go. Very good, guys. <clears throat> All right. Well, let's look at the next one I have highlighted. I didn't have any really. I just randomly picked. Okay. Let's look at this one. Is this already set up nice and easy for us? Okay. So everywhere I see a Y, what am I going to plug in? Perfect, guys. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So I have 4x minus 3 times negative 2 equals 18. 4x, what? Plus 6 equals 18. Good. We're going to subtract 6 from both sides. So 4x equals 12. Divide by 4, and x equals 3. <clears throat> What's my ordered pair? 3, 3 comma, negative 2. Mentally, real quick, 4 times 3 is 12, minus 3 times negative 2, which would be negative 6. So 3 plus 6, 18. Good to go. Any more on this page? Okay, let's go to the next. <clears throat> All right, why don't we love this problem? It's not just set up like, here you go, on a silver platter. So this is where you guys decide, okay, what variable do I want to solve for and which equation do I want to use? Which would be the easiest thing to do? The top one, the top one and solve for what? Uh, X. X, okay. Raul said the bottom one, okay, what would you solve for? You could solve for why. Why is why? I don't. When it doesn't matter because look, guys, what can you do with the bottom one? You can divide everything by what? Three. Three, right? It'll work out fine. So it doesn't matter if you don't choose the same variable I do. I'm just going to look at this and the for ease factor, I say, okay, look, this is already an x by itself. So how would I get x? There's no coefficient, is what I mean by that. So I can just say x plus three y equals 1. How would I get x all by itself? Minus 3y three three from both sides. So this becomes x equals negative 3y plus 1. Could I have written 1 minus 3y? Yeah. Yes, same thing. So now I'm going to say, okay, everywhere I see an x, whoops, I meant to highlight that. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in this. Now if you went the other route and you use something in the bottom equation, that's fine. As long as you guys do the process correctly <clears throat> and you show your work and you get the correct answer, I don't care which variable you use or which equation. So I'm going to say negative 3 times, instead of x, I have negative 3y plus 1 minus 3y equals negative 15. What do I do? Distribute. So negative 3 times negative 3y and negative 3 times 1. So negative times a negative is a positive 9y 
minus 3y, correct? Thank you, I have no idea why I wrote that. It's negative, negative three times negative three is positive nine y, and then negative three times one is minus three. Minus three y equals negative 15, agreed? <clears throat> All right, like terms, what's nine y minus three y? So six y minus three equals negative 15. Now what? Add three to both sides, great. Six y equals? <coughs> Negative 12, divide by 6, and what do you get? Y equals negative 2. Now, in order to find x, what do I do? Plug it back in. To which equation? Doesn't matter. Top or bottom? I'm going to do the top one because it looks easier. So I have x plus 3 times negative 2 equals 1. x minus 6 equals 1. What do I do to both sides? add 6. So I got x equals 7. So I'd write it as an ordered pair of 7 comma negative 2. Before I move on, what should I do? Let's just check it. <clears throat> okay, so in the top equation I have 7 plus, what's 3 times negative 2? Negative, negative 6. So 7 plus negative 6, does that give me 1? Yeah, okay. Then in the bottom one, negative 3 times 7 is? negative 21, right? And then negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. So what's negative 21 plus 6? Negative 15. So that works. We're good to go. Questions so far? We're still good? All right, 16. What jumps out at you that would be the easiest thing? Uh, the, top the top one to solve for which variable? <clears throat> Again, you don't have to solve for the same variable I do. I'm just trying to go with what's easiest. I picked that one because there's no coefficient with y. I don't have to divide anything out. So how do I get y all by itself? Minus 2x from both sides. So I have y equals negative 2x plus 20. So everywhere I see a y, I'm going to put a negative 2x plus 20. Six x minus five times negative two x plus twenty equals twelve. <clears throat> Distribute six x. What's a negative five and a negative two? Plus ten x. What's negative five times positive twenty? Minus a hundred equals twelve. So six and ten gives me sixteen x. Correct. What do I do with the one hundred? I'm going to add 100 to both sides, so I get 112, and then what? Divide both sides by 16, what do I get? 7? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now how do I figure out what y equals if I know what x is? You plug it back in. So I'm going to plug it into the top one, 2x plus y equals 20. 2 times 7 plus y equals 20. 14 plus y equals 20. What does y equal? If I minus 14 from both sides, y equals 6, right? So I got 7 comma 6. Am I right? Do I know for sure that I'm right? Let's check. 7 times 2 is 14, right? Plus 6, does that give me 20? Yes or no? Yeah? Guys? 7 times 2 is? Plus 6 is? Okay, so we're good. On the bottom, I have 6 times 7, which is? 42, good. Minus, what's 5 times 6? So 42 minus 30, does that give me 12? Yep, we're good. <clears throat> Good job. All right, one more, and then I'm going to talk about some cases that you might encounter. Oh, geez. What do you guys know about this one? 
Hmm. It's gross, right? Ew. Yep. That's just gross. Stop. Don't do it because it's too that's, hard. That's what I would yeah. do. That's what some of you would do. <laughs> but we're not going to. Which variable do you want to solve for? Doesn't matter. I'm going to pick 2x. Why do you think I'm picking 2x out of all of those? Positive. Because it's positive. Good. It's all right, let's, let's solve this bottom equation. 2x minus 7y equals negative 17. I'm going to solve for x. The reason I chose this one is because all the other ones are negative. <clears throat> so it, on top of having a coefficient, it also has a negative that I just really don't want to deal with. So I'm going to add 7y to both sides. Gives me 2x equals 7y minus 17. Then what? Ugh, divide it by 2. So x equals 7 over 2y minus 17 over 2. Now, what do you know happens when you divide an odd number by 2? You, you do get a fraction, but is it a terminating? Like, if I turn it into a decimal, is it terminating or not? No. It's not? What's 7 divided by 2? 3.5, right? It's, an, it's not one of those repeating ones that go on forever. If you wanted to change to a decimal at this point, you could, right? If you plug that in your calculator, if you do 17 divided by 2 and you get a terminating decimal, which would be 8.5, that's fine. Now you're just dealing with decimals. <clears throat> if you do 1 divided by 3 and you get 0.3, that's not a terminating decimal. you got to leave it as a fraction. <clears throat> but I'm going to tough it out. I'm going to use fractions. So everywhere I see an x in this top equation, this is what I have to plug in, right? Agreed? Okay, here we go. Come on. I have negative, negative 5 times 7 over 2y minus 17 over 2 minus 8y equals 17, right? I'm not sure why my 7s are looking so odd. <laughs> I know, it's just brutal. <clears throat> so negative 5 times 7, this is going to give me negative 35y over 2, correct? Then I have negative 5 times 17. It's going to be a positive. What's 17 times 5? What is it? Is it? So it's 185y over 2, right? Agreed? minus 8y equals 17. <clears throat> now, when you get to this point, you can do something that would make your life easier. What's wrong? What'd I do? Okay. I'm not, sorry. This should be just 85, not 185. Now, this is the equation that I have right here. Now, there's some things you can do. If you did not go to decimals, there's some things you could do to make this a little easier. Yeah, I changed it. Didn't I? No, it's uh, you put a Y after it. Oh, golly. I'm sorry. God, guys, killing you. I'm sorry. Are we good now? Thank you. Now I have two denominators and I, of two, and then I have two denominators of one. Now we could change everything to a denominator of two, or I could get rid of that denominator. How would I do that? Multiply, multiply everything by what number? Mm -hmm. I can multiply this entire thing by a two. Because <clears throat> when I do that, what happens with the two on top and the two in the bottom? So this would leave you with negative 35y, right? What would the next term be? Plus 85. Minus 16y, good. Then what? Equals 17 times 2? 34. Now I don't have my denominator anymore. You guys can do that. Or you can just go to decimals. It's fine. 
But if you wanted to keep it as a fraction, in order to get rid of a denominator, you could just multiply everything by whatever the denominator is, and the denominators will cancel out. So now we can clean this up a little bit. What's negative 35 and a negative 16? Negative 51. And then <clears throat> I have plus 85 equals 34. Agreed? What do I do with 85? Subtract 85 from both sides. So I have negative 51y equals, what's 34 minus 85? Negative 51. Doesn't that work out nicely? Now what can I do? Divide both sides by negative 51. And y equals 1. Now that I know that y equals 1, what can I do to figure out what x equals? I can plug it back in. Does it matter which one I plug it into? No. I'm just going to plug it into the top one. Minus five, negative 5x five minus 8 times 1 equals 17. <clears throat> negative 5x minus 8 equals 17. What do I do to both sides? Add 8. Add eight. So I have negative 5x equals, what's 17 plus 8? 25, divide both sides by negative 5, and x equals, is it negative or positive? Negative 5. So my ordered pair would be negative 5 comma 1. Guys, just because you have a fraction. It does not mean it's A, not going to work. It's going to be like a ridiculously hard problem, anything like that. You will have fractions on your test. I promise you. So you have two ways that you can fix it. You can either multiply through and get rid of the denominator, or you can change it to a decimal. But you can only do the decimal if it's a terminating decimal. You cannot solve an equation with a decimal that you have rounded. You can't say it's 2.33334 can't do that. It has to be a terminating decimal. Now let's just check to make sure this works. Mentally, we can do this. What's negative 5 times negative 5? 25. And then minus 8 times 1 is 8. What's 25 minus 8? 17, which is what the first equation says. Look at the bottom one. 2 times negative 5, negative 10. And then I have minus 7 times 1. So negative 10 minus 7 gives me what? so you know that you did the problem correctly. Okay, so that is the end of our substitution lesson. Anything that I did not do on the video, <clears throat> I will work out right now and I'll post it like I did the graphing so you guys can work on these problems, check yours against mine, come to me with questions if you have any, All right?